Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, first, let me add my voice to those of my colleagues to wish Dr. Poyot a speedy recovery. And I look forward to seeing her taking her place back in this August chamber, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I rise in support of the Tourism Development Bill now on the floor of this August body. Mr. Speaker, I will speak a bit as parliamentary rep for Sufre, as a resident of Sufre, the heartbeat of tourism and the industry. And I will say just a little as the Minister for Commerce, because it's also part of the business community. Mr. Speaker, as a resident for Sufre, I've seen tremendous progress in the industry. But before I go into details, I want today to add my voice to that of the Honorable Prime Minister to commend the Minister for Tourism for the significant work that he has done in the industry. I also want to commend the staff of the Ministry of Tourism, in particular, the Permanent Secretary, Ms. Vite, someone who has a foundation in the right place in the <coughs> Soufre community. Look at the smile. Jean Soufouye. Fondation. Fondation Soufouye. Um, I, my interaction with, with the PS goes a long way when she was a product development officer at the ministry. I also want to recognize Dipta for the face that you see when you look for quality, the person who goes around giving advice to the players. And I also notice here uh, Mr. Thaddeus Antoine, who chairs one of the allied agencies from that industry. Um, not with us today as well is Lorraine, St. Jean, St. Jules, St. Jules, sorry. Um, and St. Jules, I think her name is. Anyway, but, um, and the other staff of the ministry for the tremendous work that they've done, Mr. Speaker. Um, as we rightly said, as policy makers, we sit and we carve the policies, but it is the civil servants and board members who actually do the day-to-day -day, um, lifting. So, my gratitude to you. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, the Tourism Development Bill, you've heard, is modern, is progressive, is far-reaching, and it's transformational. It's transformative. And you know, when I started reading it, it reminded me of the NIC tagline for the benefit of us all. The tagline that remains relevant up to today. Mr. Speaker, when I sort of reflect on the, the industry, when you think of the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, what has happened? At one point, the industry was populated and controlled by large hotels, and all of them were for it own. Then progressively, we saw a handful of locals moving in the industry. And as I sat there, I tried to bring my memory back. We had the Villa Hotel by the Gidharis, Blue Water Beach Hotel by the St. Helens, we have Malabar by the Barnards, and afterwards we have Bay Gardens by the Destangs. And we start thinking of persons that have actually shaped the industry. And we think of persons like Bufia Pal. In Soufre, I think of the Anchasne Hotel and the gentleman with the creative mind, Nick Trubiskov, now Nick Trubiskoy. I think of Stonefield, Fanista, and Wayne Brown. 
Um, and I think of the Dashin, which is now the Ladera. And when you think of each of these hotels, and the Dashin was owned by a gentleman by the name of John de Paul. That's the history that I know. And I can remember those persons who went around the rocks of Sufre and picked up the perfect view and used the right architecture. That's what makes it as unique as it is now. When we think of the restaurant, we thought of again the Dashin. Mr. De Paul had this restaurant in the center of town. The Diboules had the steel restaurants. And then we think of the morning for our green parrots by the unforgettable, multi talented international chef Harry, again from Fonche Jacques Soufouye. Mm -hmm. He's from there? That's where he's from. That is just telling you Super producers that we produce. <laughs> the heartbeat of the industry. Mr. Speaker, in 19... <laughs> when I think of the, of the sh what shaped it, and, and the minister gave a date, around 1999, we had the Heritage Tourism product. And I think of our brother, Felix Finister, who did tremendous work in bringing Heritage Tourism to us. And I remember I was part of, dele of a delegation with Agnes... Um, Agnes, what's his name? Francis. Francis. And we went to Jamaica, and they also went to Costa Rica. Again, at that time, looking at community tourism. And I believe we developed a handbook for heritage tourism that was adopted in Barbados before it was adopted here. And I'm saying all of that to give us an idea of where we are and how the industry has moved. In 2007, on the Cricket World Cup, this SLB administration added, came in for incentives under the three, three room, um, three, three rooms to incentive at that time under the tourism industry, uh, under the Cricket World Cup program. Now, Mr. Speaker, it is again a central Labour Party government mm -hmm. that is presenting transformative legislation in the That's industry. Right. An industry that is impacting approximately 40% of our GDP. Now, when I say tourism is the lifeblood of Sufre, I think of the yachting sector. And I know we've had significant conversation with tourism personnel for work to strengthen and regulate that sector in Sufre. It is critical for us. It impacts my entire community at Barron's Drive. It impacts my boat boys that are very dear to me. And I think only Monday we had them under some conversation and discussion to see how best we can put order in the disorder that is happening down there. Mm -hmm. So I want to recognize the work that is being done by the Sufre Marine Management Authority with persons like the chairperson, Mr. Harold Dalson. We have as well, when I think of Soufre on the sites and tours, we have our Gros Piton and our Sulphur Spring, both managed by the Soufre Regional Development Foundation, an institution that is critical to the progress of St. Lucia and the people of Soufre in particular. But within Gros Piton, we have the Piton Management Area Authority, and that is headed by Mrs. Joan Hippolyte. All of that is important for us because the product that we have, that bill that we have, is relevant if all these other things are taken care of. Because over 80% of the visitors that appear on this St. Lucia will come to visit Sufre. So I'm saying all of that to say that we have the assets. I am grateful for the work that is happening within the ministry to protect the industry. And I welcome, I welcome, I welcome this particular bill before us. Over the years, we've seen the increase in visitor numbers. 
as well over the years we've seen the increase of local involvement in the industry. In Sufre, for example, we've seen a significant increase in our Airbnbs. And I believe that when we looked at some of the data in library, we see the growth. And we see the growth and we see how it impacts the lives of the people immediately. Um, we've seen as well the growth in package stores. Our people being involved in it. Our people involved in transportation. Our people being involved in new restaurants, in boating. In, for example, in transportation in Sufre, you have the Michael Gustav, you have Ben Saltibus. In bars and restaurants, so Barons Drive, you have Aquinas. You have Alvin Boyo in Lenny's Hill. Um, in new development where I live, every other room <coughs> is an Airbnb. When I think of Ponchon Jacques, I see Mr. Philippi with his new restaurant in Belvedere. I look at the farm to table experience by the galaxies way up in the wash. I see what is happening at Bigger's place. I see what Orlando is doing way down to present a unique product um, on Cemetery Road, high end restaurant. Mr. Speaker, as a pal rep for Soufre, I am happy. I am pleased um, in terms of what I'm seeing. In Fonchet Jacques, for example, we have the Fonchet Jacques Agro Tourism Park. And there we are getting assistance from Jeff, as well as the Taiwanese of, um, CDF. And only last week, we officially opened the Interpretation Center at Fonchet Jacques. The first step for the Fonchet Jacques Agro Tourism Park. So, Mr. Speaker, what has, who are some of the other persons who are going to benefit from this? In Soufre, we put together the Vendors Association, about 150 members. And again, 150 members, we've brought them together. And what it has caused us to do, and I want to take this moment again to thank the Ministry of Tourism, because there the ministry has come together and has at least provided training on two occasions to our vendors. And again, I want to thank Sugar Beach for facilitating um, those training sessions. So Mr. Speaker, as the Minister for Commerce, and within my ministry, we have the MSME program. And a lot of the persons who have applied for grants under that program are persons involved in the industry. So I am also, I also welcome what the Honorable Prime Minister has done by putting the youth economy together. There's a lot of the young men, especially the boat boys, have applied for grants under the youth economy. So now that we have put, we have the youth economy, the Ministry of Tourism has a community development authority, we have the Small Business Development Unit working with them. All of that is a government putting all the pieces together in various ministries. But all of it is for the ordinary man and woman, the ordinary youth to benefit and to play a critical role in the economy of St. Lucia so that tomorrow they can say they are owners the drivers of their own destiny. And it is this St. Lucia Labour Party government that is causing our people to be the future millionaires of tomorrow. That's right. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased that this legislation places emphasis on green energy and conservation water recycling, the protection of our ocean, the protection of our coral reef, the issue of food security. All of these issues are critical to us as a people. And consequently, it is good that within this piece of legislation, you have provided incentives to players in the industry 
so that they can recognize that, so that they can, the practices can fall within um, the SDGs, so that while they earn an income, they protect our environment and ensure that we have sustainability. That is very good, Mr. Speaker. I am also pleased that provision is made in the legislation to meet the cost of certification for the first two years. Because, Mr. Speaker, and again, that is where we speak about quality, ensuring that we work with all the players in the industry to improve the quality of service. But we also recognize that as small players, they would not have the resources to meet that certification. So there again, you have a government ensuring that we have right quality, but also providing the support that is required by meeting the <coughs> fees for the next two years while our businesses progress. So Mr. Speaker, today, I am extremely pleased to support this legislation and I want to commend both our Prime Minister and Minister of Finance and our Minister for Tourism and his staff for a very good piece of legislation. I thank you.